Like, it's 1966 Cadillac Heavenly Hearse. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box, dude? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Monster Hobbies, what's in the box, dude? Today, we're going to be looking at another surf mobile. Like last time we looked at the California dune buggy from 1964. So today we're going to be looking at the 1966 Cadillac Hearse, dude. All right. So I'm down here at our Tiki display at Monster Hobbies. And if you like Tikis, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family so that every time I make a groovy video, you are the first to know about it. So without further ado, let's hit the sands and get out our boards and hit the waves as we unbox this rare holy grail of a surf kit by Johan. Beach time, fun in the sun, and what could be a better beach party machine than having your own heavenly hearse to haul those amazing surfboards with? And today we're going to look at Johan's 1966 Cadillac hearse model kit, which was a very popular model back in the day and is still a cool collector's item for now. It's one of those model kits where you don't know if you should build it as a heavenly hearse or as the stock funeral coach, which is also pictured on the side of the box here. Johan had some amazing models back in the day and they would cover model car ground the AMT, Ravel, Monogram and the other domestic model manufacturers would not cover. The hearse of course being one of them. And there's also a drag racing hearse out there as well. Now if we turn the box up on this side and just zoom out a little more. Oh, there is no more. <laughs> We can see that this was one of Johan's Gold Cup Series model cars. And again, very nice artwork, very cool. And you can imagine a whole bunch of groovy mods from 66 hanging out on the beach. Here they show a complete wild set of decals, a giant rack for your surfables, the uh, heavy hood with swoop scoop, and by the light of the <laughs> lamps, you also get these great surfboards and two sets of scuba dubas, scuba diving tanks, and a wild surf for bowl for the ride of a lifetime. <laughs> Groovy goodies for your heavenly hearse. Perfect timing for 1966 with the mod scene that was very popular. Mixed in, of course, with the surf scene. Now, I'm just going to open up the box lid here and just give you a brief look. This kit I bought second hand. Uh, the decals were missing out of it, but somebody came along later and gave me some decals, which is pretty interesting. Now here we have the, the, the Heavenly Hearse is molded in a nice purple color, very similar to this old bottle of Tester's 1134 Purple. This, of course, needs to be shaken up, but you can see a bit of the light underneath, the lighter purple color. If we open this up, there's our purple there. <laughs> oh yeah, the top of the cap. So yeah, a little bit darker. There was a lighter purple, a mauve color, I believe. I do believe that was Tester's 1134, sorry, 1135. If you remember it, write it in the comments down below. Okay, so this box I've opened up and packed and repacked a few times. Got a chrome tree, so this would not be as factory. I also tried to protect our glass with a tissue paper, just from any further scratchings. Then I have this. I do believe are the decals. Yeah, and you can see I don't have a full set. I've just got scraps of the full set. And then of course we have our Johan instructions, followed by the surfboards. And it looks like the engine was glued together at one point in time. The wheels and tires, all that groovy stuff. Whoops. 
So what we'll do now is look at the instructions and clean up behind here. <laughs> So looking at our instruction sheet, it folds out long ways. We have one big long sheet of paper folded into a bunch of panels here. But if we come in at this angle, you can actually see just what instruction sheets from the 1960s from Johan look like. Let's just, there we go, better framing. <laughs> so here we have our Gold Cup series, the address, the former address for Johan, the uh, stock hearse, as well as the heavenly hearse pictured on the box. So you really have an option of building this one of two ways, and I wish I had two of these so I could build them both ways, but heavenly hearse currently is a pretty expensive, rare model kit to find, although they are out there. Uh, note, read this before you begin. Read the instructions thoroughly and study the assembly drawings and the parts list to become familiar with all parts of this model. And it goes on. Scrape off chrome plating in areas which will be cemented. Cement will not hold to plated surfaces, or painted for that matter. Anyway, they give you an entire parts list, which is nice. This one got kind of crunched on in the instructions there. But you've got like rear door handle, rear, win rear window drapes, radiator, windshield washer jar, headlights, taillights, mag wheels, scuba tank. And the bolded um, parts here are for the heavenly hearse, whereas the rest is for the regular hearse. Now the interesting thing is Cadillac actually broke some sales records in 1966 with this model. Uh, not the model kit, <laughs> but the actual model, car, uh, the real car. They ended up selling 200,000 cars for that year, which put them in 11th place in the sales. Very cool stuff. So here we have the engine assembly, and this is Joe Han's version of the Cadillac V8. It is rather simplified from, say, the more modern AMT kits and that, but it's still a pleasure to, to build. You have your engine block halves with the transmission attached gluing together. You've got the entire intake and cylinder heads and distributor as one entire piece, the intake manifold. You've got uh, valve covers that go on left and right, the exhaust manifolds left and right, your four barrel carburetor and your air cleaner, as well as your fan, your fan belt and pulley assembly, and your alternator. And this is a very basic um, engine assembly. One thing that is cool is coming up here in panel number two. I can't really zoom in too much. Well, I could if I block off this text here. At the bottom of each panel, Johan has assembly instructions, just so you know, because now I'm gonna pull this off so you can't see them. <laughs> okay, confidential information has now been removed. No, anyway. All right, that's my joke. So here we have a steering wheel with a separate gear selector, which was a nice feature on the Johan kits because it just slid up the column and you glued it in place. Then we've got our instrument panel here, as well as the front seat cushion and the front seat back. This has two separate pieces. This is a tub style interior, which was popular back in the 60s. So the detail on the door panels may not be as crisp as the more modern separately molded door panels. However, we do have our back seat. Uh, they call it a storage, comp a storage cabinet. So that would glue onto the back here. 
Oh, it actually doesn't have a rear seat. This is a partition wall and with the storage cabinet on the back. All right. And here we have individually molded accelerator and brake pedals. This is an automatic because there is no clutch pedal over here. And we'll get into panel number three. This panel number three shows our chassis, which is a single piece, much like a slot car. However, there is posable steering on here. You've got a tie rod and your front left and right spindle, as well as the lower part of your front suspension. The wheels are a four piece unit. You've got your wheel cover hubcaps here, your tire, the brake drum, and the rear wheel retainer, or front inner wheel halves. Okay. There's your option of the mag wheels to use on your heavenly hearse instead of your stock hubcaps. And in the rear, you have a front wheel, a tire, and a rear wheel, which goes through on these location blocks into the chassis with a metal axle tying the two together. Here should be a plastic pin somewhere. We'll look when we see our parts. Now, one thing that's cool about this heavenly hearse in panel number four, you actually have an opening rear door, which consists of the inner door panel, the body, the drapes, the rear door with a handle, uh, a piece of glass here, and the actual rear door panel <laughs> right there. This will all hinge inside to swing outward on your heavenly hearse. Now flipping the instructions over, you have to turn them around. Panel 5 shows the body and interior tub going together. There is the uh, partition windows in here as well as side curtains for your side windows, your front windshield, the firewall drops in, you got your battery and radiator as well. And then we move over to panel six, which shows the hood clicking in, side mirrors, you've got your front headlights. Unfortunately, there's no individual glass in here, but they are individual to the body. Your new for 66 redesigned 1965 style grill. The license plate goes in there. Then we have the rear bumper with the tail lenses and, of course, our license plate. And I guess panel number seven is the Heavenly Hearse panel, which here I just zoom back a little. A little bit more. <laughs> okay, this shows the groovy hood scoop going on with the big roof racks for the two surfboards which have rudders and our scuba tank halves with the valves as well as our beach party lamp there's two of them goes on either side and there you go one thing that i'm not sure if they had them but a lot of hearses have that landau iron that goes in here and crosses down here and ends up there i'm not sure if this kit actually has one Although it does show it on the side of the box here, on the lid, there. So we'll have to take a look at that when we examine our parts. So overall, the instructions are very nostalgic for that 1960s feel. And they're easy to follow, so you should have no trouble building your heavenly hearse. So now we're going to look at our Cadillac hearse body. And this thing is large, as you can see. Extended for the passengers in the back. <laughs> But anyway, this is a beautifully molded body, considering uh, the 1960s standards back then. It's a nice, thick polystyrene plastic. You can really feel it as you turn it around. It does feel like it has some heft to it. Very beautifully done. We have our vinyl roof here. Ooh, with the texture. Uh, I have sanded the roof a little bit. I think there was a slight imperfection in it. I do have to do more. There's more seam lines around here. But as you can tell, it's got the big Cadillac side marker lights in there. Uh, nice side body molding. It's got the fender skirts. We also have the emblem here. And then our fuel door as well as the rear door. There is a uh, little bracket in here to stop the back door from falling in. 
And since I have it over here, there's our back door. And as you can see, the fit and finish is very nice. There's a bit of a gap around the door, but I think it's forgivable. If you notice here, it's got this panel here, which is an interlock into the chassis. Then of course we do have our holes here for the big Landau iron that would go across there and there. It's very nicely done. Of course the four door handles. And as we come to the front, you'll notice on the radiator wall, there is a bit of detail in there. And on the back, it does have these little pegs in there, but it's not quite the screw mount peg and post stuff that we're used to seeing. There are hidden holes along the body here for drilling through for your side mirrors, as well as in the roof panel. Whoops, let's see. A couple in the roof panel for that big long roof rack. There are mold marks under the roof, which are easily removed with your number 16 hobby blade. There are some ribs in the headliner. I'm sorry, some ribs in the headliner and a bit of texture there too. So again, quite a cool little model kit, large model kit. Uh, I'm just going to show the hood here for a minute. So we have our nice mauve colored hood. We've got the Cadillac emblem in there. And underneath we've got that fireproof matting. There are some mold marks in here that again you could take out with your hobby knife. And the, we also have this hood scoop here, which would go on the hood with, again, some old marks underneath. This would fit on there somewhere for your flower power. <laughs> Get more flowers into that 429 Caddy motor. So anyway, the hood here, you just gently push in on the hood hinge and it should lock in. And notice the nice fit and finish on there. That is Johan at its finest. So again, beautifully sculpted. So just to move this along a little bit, I thought I would uh, put a bunch of parts together. So here we have our chassis. And as you can see, it is a full perimeter frame. This was reintroduced on the Cadillac 75 series cars. They went away from the X frame that came out on Cadillacs in 1957. Part of this has been built like according to the instructions because again I got this second hand and it was in a strange state of being semi-built actually so here we have this gigantic fuel cell I mean that's that's a lot to carry uh, for gas when you drive around in your hearse the rear differential of course is molded in as one piece with the chassis as well as the exhaust pipe and muffler but look at the size of this exhaust pipe it's as big if not bigger than the drive shaft. <laughs> That's uh, how you uh, get smoke out of your 429 super motor. So here we can see there's some tubes going on in here and that is for our front suspension components. So our uh, lower A arms here would pop into there. There's holes for our king pins to fit in. The king pins have two little bumps on here which go into our wheel backs there and there, and then, or our brake drums, pardon me. Then these wheel backs would go onto the brake drum this way and glue onto your wheel. And then you'd be able to, uh, to spin it into your tire, you know. These are wheel backs, which are very similar to, say, AMT's 1964 Chevy. They, of course, have all the detail molded in place, and you just put your metal axle in. Unfortunately, in this kit, the metal axle has got quite a bit rusted, but should be able to clean it up with some steel wool. Okay, let's just take a look at this chassis here. Oh, can't go too high. <laughs> uh, this actually does have the holes in here for the screws to go through on our peg and post, but there is a bit of a difference because that's not how our Cadillac goes together. However, I don't know if you guys can catch this, but right here is a line 
and right here is a line. There's a line on our differential and on our exhaust pipe here. So what I think is that when Johan made this, they must have made a, a second mold or something. One for the regular 66 Johan Cadillac kit and extended in this area here and here, stretched out backward for the hearse because you need the extra storage area, of course. But still, I mean, it's, it represents what it represents. And here we've got these big inner fender aprons. There is some detail, as you can see in here and here. All the mold marks are actually going to be covered over, except for this one sitting up high. It should remove it, flatten these ones down, just so your interior tub can fit in perfectly. And you'll notice the two little notches at the back here. Those, of course, link into the back of our body right into those squares. So again, a nice way to lock the chassis into the body on this very amazing kit. Next up we have our engine components. This of course is the Cadillac 429 with a big automatic transmission, a huge one in fact. Now like I said this kit was second hand so somebody started on the engine. I did strip it with some easy off oven cleaner. You can see there was some orange paint on her. It does have, here I'll just move the motor up here, frost plugs molded in, some nice detail on the transmission the starter motor on this side and the um, water pump cover is and timing chain cover are molded on. You also have this as one unit. So your intake manifold and your cylinder heads as well as your distributor. There are some motor mounting uh, pins sitting on the side of the transmission. Then of course we have our fan and our pulley system. We've got a nice battery here. You can actually read uh, Delco right between the battery terminals. Unfortunately mine's a little bit warped. I don't know if you can see that. Whoops. And there it goes off screen. We've got our windshield washer bottle, our air cleaner, which is sort of a generic type of Cadillac air cleaner, our exhaust manifolds, and our nicely done radiator. Next up on our heavenly hearse we have all our interior components. And like I said before, this model was built by somebody else, so I have stripped it with some easy off oven cleaner, although the paint does leave a bit of a stain into the plastic. So we have our bench seat here, which would go in here on our interior bucket. Then we have this partition wall, that's the bottom part. This is the top part, which will go into the body, and there's a, a, a window here, which will get some clear glass. Then we have our back. This is the area for the back door. We've got these nice curtains in here, our steering wheel, the 1966 Cadillac dashboard, as well as our rear door and our firewall. So let's just take a look at these pieces closer up. All right, so starting with our interior bucket, you can see it is a very long interior bucket, but it does have a lot of nice features in here. For example, you can see the nice upholstery in. It's got door handles and window cranks, as well as a nice carpeted material. The, uh, the rubber mat here on our floor pan. Then we've got the little well in here. Of course, there's a step there on the real hearses and ambulances. There's also our window winders and our nice luxuriant upholstery in here and a couple of things on the side. Then of course we have our rails here for our, our uh, casket. There is no casket in this kit. 
However, there are some out there in 25th scale, especially from the Barnabas Collins um, 32 Ford, or sorry, 32 Chevy uh, Vampire Van, I do believe. Oops, there are some old marks into the carpet, but they could easily be taken out with your number 16 hobby blade, as well as some in here on the floor pans. And if we turn this upside down, it is very smooth on the bottom, and there is this rectangular tongue whoop, sticking out here, which will go in into the back of the car body. So with that out of the way, there's our bench seat. And even though it did stain with the paint, you can see the nice detail in it. It is smooth along the back. This is a two-part seat, as you can see on the seam line there. And it will fit nicely into our interior bucket right there. Then we've got our partition wall here. And again, you can see all the nice detail, as well as the smooth back. And this will go in here, like that. So next up we have our dashboard here. And it is a really cool looking dashboard, very similar to the 1959 Cadillac, especially with our instrument panels sitting right here with these nice gauges on the end and our elongated speedometer sitting there. There's a nice Cadillac emblem sitting right here. I don't see a glove compartment on this side of the dashboard though. Um, I'm not sure if Cadillac had a glove box there or how that was all arranged. However, if you guys have actually driven a 66 Cadillac, let me know down in the comments section below. and. Uh, yeah, let me know if Johan just missed that detail, or if there actually is no glove box there, or if it's some kind of elaborate fold-down affair I'm not seeing. Anyway, the instrument panel dashboard, pardon me, fits right into there. Nice, perfect fit to it. And uh, here's our steering wheel for the car. A nice three-spoke Cadillac range steering wheel. Very cool. It's even got the Cadillac logo right there, the Cadillac crown, as well as the horns or the buttons sitting on the edge of the rings of our steering wheel. And again, nice fit going into our instrument panel. And like the instructions showed, there are the shift levers for the uh, steering column that mounts on there. Whoops, those would be chrome components. Okay, and then we have our nice detailed back door with all the door handle panels and the pleated interior. And there's our insert, and if we turn it over, you can see there are some mold marks on here, like there and there, and down below as well, which can be removed with your number 16 hobby blade. And as you can see here, there is accommodation for the hinges. And the hinges will lock into place when you glue this panel into the body. And keep in mind that we also have our door, which glues on the front of this, or back of this. And this would all appear into here on the car. Just move that out of the way. And then we also have our partition wall sitting here with the insert for the window and the chrome trim on this side. This of course will be sitting in here and it glues up inside the body. And then we also have these nicely detailed curtains for our heavenly hearse. And one thing that's nice about this is if you turn them over, there's no mold marks on these curtains. And these will peg up into the windows right about here and we've got three of those. And then over here we've got our firewall as well, which will be gluing to the front. And to here, there's actually two little tabs sitting here on our interior compartment, which is designed just for this to fit in under those two tabs. So 
that will go nicely into place. There's a sink mark along the top of the dashboard here as well as on the top of our firewall right there where the hood fits. Um, but anyway, and of course here we have our heater motor and the blower fan on there as well as all the nice wiring going up here, our master cylinder and brake. And then we've got a few of the other goodies here, the electrical bits, and this big bulge. <laughs> Not quite sure what that is. Oh, I wonder if that's... No, I don't know. All right, if you know in the comments below, let me know what that is. Something for the Cadillac. So I was thinking like air-assisted brakes, but... I don't know. Maybe that's a little too advanced for the era. So that leads us to the conclusion of our interior. Let's check out some of the other groovy features on this model. <laughs> Now it's time for our groovy mod parts and we have our scuba dubas sitting right here man and then we got our great big surfboards right coming at you like crazy dude our wild surfable for the ride of a lifetime <laughs> all right here's our surfboards for this model kit with the separate fins that glue into these slots right there our scuba tanks and I showed these before, but I didn't really show them or mention them. These are Michigan license plates BD6679. Coming in there, breaker breaker. Alright, anyway. These little license plates here. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. Alright, can you see this kids at home? <laughs> anyway. Interesting how many uh, model kits use Michigan in their license plates. How many Michigan model kit license plates do you have lying around in your decals and in your plastic model kits? Anyway, um, the nice thing about these is they're actual license plates. They are raised letters in here, so you can just easily Google up 1960s Michigan license plates and you'll know exactly what color to paint these beauties. All right, next up we have our favorite part, the chrome components. And here we have a beautiful Cadillac chrome tree. We have our valve covers here. We've got our custom wheels, as well as our Cadillac stock hubcaps, the rear bumper, the dual quad headlights. Um, we have these, which are for our lanterns and the bottoms of our lanterns, or the tops of lanterns. We also have these Digby uh, plaques that go on the the regular hearse, as well as all our great luggage racks and other beautiful things. Check out the nice crisp detail here on our Cadillac grill. Even has a Cadillac license plate, which you can scrape this emblem off if you just want the Michigan plates as well as our parking lights in here. And again, some of that Nuln oil from Games Workshop would look good in here. There's a little bit of the old peg and post on the bumper mounts, but I won't hold that against them. <laughs> There's a lot of flash on this that we'll have to clean up, but the rear bumper has these slotted holes for the tail lights to go into. And again, look at the wonderfully molded Cadillac script on there. This again is one of those great parts trees. You will have to add a little bit of wash into your headlights to make them look more realistic. However, again, beautiful chrome job. This is one of the better Johan chromes because they have actually been a bit thick and chunky in the later Seville years. All right, here we have the glass components and I've also brought out the bench seat. I've got a little anecdote to go with this in just a minute. But here you'll notice that 
every piece of glass on this old Johan kit is molded separately. They are not connected like the AMT, let's say, 1964 Chevy, the Impala, where it had the front window and the rear window and it was connected with these long clear plastic sort of flat rods, or however you want to describe that. These are actually all individually molded. So as you can see, we have our two side long rear windows, as well as the passenger windows up by the dashboard, because of course there's our angle there. Then we have our partition glass. We also have our rear window for the opening door, our windshield, these two bubblegum domes for our side um, party lights, and then we have the red molded tail lights. All done very nicely and all actually scratch free considering the vintage of this kit and the fact that I got it second hand, so I'm pretty lucky for that. Although with these being separate you have to be really careful of gluing them in. Okay, so for the seat, what's significant about this is 1966 is the first year that Cadillac had heated front seats. And now the other part of this little story is back in the early 1990s when I was still, well, in another Canadian province, I was looking at actually buying a hearse to use as sort of, I don't know what I had in mind. I never, I didn't have the hobby shop at that time. I think I just wanted something cool to drive around in and, you know, and, and there was a tattoo parlor that had like a 50s Cadillac. So there was a GM dealer that sold Cadillacs. Was uh, kind of out of the way, but not too far away. Anyway, I never did get the hearse, but the guy there was telling me that the hearses have all the same features in them as the top luxury Cadillacs. And that's continued even to, well, I think I was looking at like 1985 hearses. So anyway, the heated seats would have been a luxury in the hearses as well as your regular Cadillac. So next up we have these Johan tires. They are really generic. There is no markings as to what these are supposed to represent. Be it Firestone, BF Goodrich, Dunlop, Michelin, whatever. There's just absolutely nothing here. However, one thing that is nice about the Johan tires is they did have these white walls that were pressed onto the tire. So, very beautiful. Um, very much the type of white wall you would have had in the 60s when they were narrowing them down, getting away from the big snowballs of the 1950s, or 40s even, where the white wall pretty much touched the ground. These ones are, of course, more narrow, more subtle, but uh, still very good. These tires are really, <laughs> like I'm, I'm pressing with all my might and I can't squish these. So they may need to be softened in some boiling water, um, then put the wheel backs into them once they start to cool down a little bit. Um, however, I'm not too sure. Have you guys experienced tires like rock hard like this? And if so, let me know how to soften them up in the comments down below. Now these are what I have left of the decals from somebody who gave me these, considering that the kit that I got actually did not have any at all. So I am lucky that these are what I have. So I tried to arrange this as best I could according to the box top. I am missing a lot of the details, but most of them are flowers and butterflies and other things. So they wouldn't be too hard to hand brush and paint on in that way. Uh, there's an interesting lack of yellow on mine. Anyway, so here we have the decal for the hood scoop, and these are the ones that go underneath the decal on the hood. And uh, let's just take a look at our box here. I know this will be up close. So this is how it goes. Actually, here. <laughs> That's better. That's what our hood looks like with our decals. So we've got these two that wrap around and get sort of sucked into the hood scoop. And then the nice decal on the top of the hood scoop. And that's what's going on in this. So there's a little bit getting sucked into the hood and the rest of the flower power stuff going around. The paisley, I guess this is a form of paisley. Then we have the decal that goes on the top 
and that would appear to be right there. And then of course the heaven before eternity and that goes across our tailgate again right there. Then we have our left and right hand side heavenly hearse uh, name and of course these images here. It's very much like uh, European German style markings. I forget what they call that art form now. I don't know if it's a Baroque or what. If you know that art style let me know in the comments below. So here I'll just zoom back here on our box top. Okay so basically what I'm missing are all these little flowers here. The butterflies and all that stuff but the uh, the mod era flowers are pretty easy to do and the Scooby-Doo Mystery Machine model kit might have a bunch of these kind of things that I could stick on there if I wanted to off of the Scooby-Doo decal sheet for our Scooby-Doobas. <laughs> Scooby-Doo! Scooby-Doo! Anyway, <laughs> so that is basically the decals from the box and what I have left. And that completes our look at the Johan 1966 Cadillac hearse, the Heavenly Hearse. And say, if you have any spare decals from this thing, if you built it in the original way here, just let me know in the comments down below and maybe I can get those decals off you. Well, dudes, thanks for tuning in to this amazing video where we got to unbox the 1966 Johan Cadillac Heavenly Hearse. And until next time, dudes, keep it real. And don't forget to visit our Tiki Mug collection right here, Monster Hobbies, where you can get this amazing Tiki Mug right here, as well as many others, dudes. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family so that every time I make a video, you are the first dude to see it. All right, see you next time at the beach.